guys, this is history. What you've done, what we've show. done. You guys have built a platform that influences. Yeah, hey, out of breakfast. Uh, it's, the, it's the world's most dangerous morning show. Break the fuck up, breakfast club. DJ Envy. Envy playing my record, I made it. Jess Hilarious. Jess Over. with <laughs> She don't spell nobody. Charlemagne the God. What made you think the liking of controversial questions would take his part? I like this show. Thanks, breakfast club. Get up. This is your time to get it off your chest. Keep calling. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Yo, this is Chris. Chris, what up? Where you calling from, brother? Oh, I'm calling from Florida, man. Florida. Florida, Florida. Get it off your chest, bro. Hey, man, I want to congratulate my girl, man, Destiny. She graduated from nursing school next month. I'm proud of her. She 18 weeks pregnant. You know what I'm saying? She did it. We got through it together. I just want to congratulate her and her whole class at Rasmussen University. They doing they thing. Oh, well, congratulations to her. Yes, sir. And, and I want to uh, shout out my homeboy, too, man. One more thing. My homeboy, Rapping Chef on Instagram. He got a million followers now, man. He doing his thing right now. He going crazy. He got everybody. I seen Jeff Hilarious in the comments on his page. You know what I'm saying? He doing good. I want to shout Shot him out too, man. Rapping Chef on Instagram. Yeah, uh, Rapping Chef is actually cool. He, he's he's really, really funny, and he be making some good stuff. Hello, who's this? Good morning. This is Kurt from 302. Hey, what's up, brother? Get it off your chest. How's everybody doing? DJ MV, Jess, and Charlamagne. Peace, brother. King. Good How morning. you doing, yo? What's happening? Good, good. I just want to give a special shout out to my daughter. Today's her birthday. She's 14 years old. Hey. Nevea, daddy loves you. Okay, what you doing for, for a birthday? Her mom just took her to Key West um, a couple of days ago, so okay. probably just take her out and give her some money. All right. Well, have a good one, brother. You sound very enthused about this. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. You sound very enthused about this today. Uh, no, I am. I, I, I ran downstairs. I didn't take my shower yet. I ran downstairs to get on the phone and make sure I make this phone call. Okay. I'm very happy. Okay, just making sure. All, All right, right, brother. Enjoy your oh, day. Oh, yeah. Your this is my shower. Yeah, have a blessed day now. Yes, sir. All right. Hello, who's this? This is Vino from North Carolina. Vino, what up? Get it off your chest. Yeah, I just want to say the whole um, Republican, Democratic, the whole whole party, um, I think we need a new, new option. I, I don't know what it is. I don't have an answer to that. But I know that um, Joe and uh, Donald, I don't think they're the answer. So I think we need to figure out something else. I agree um, with you. I know other people have been voting, I guess, on the, the, pri um, the primary I guess like something to the effect of none of the above. I think we might yeah, need none of the above, different. uncommitted, uncommitted exactly. <clears throat> so I just think that we need um we need another option. Uh, I, like I said, somebody else out there, independent party, but I, I don't see anybody stepping up. So we need something else. Maybe it needs to come from uh, our 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 generation. Yeah, it's, it's it's amazing to me that uh, the last couple of presidential elections, you know, you haven't had a, a a third party really make some noise. But I think it's all about the candidate. Like we haven't had the right third party candidate yet. Mm -hmm. When we get the right third party candidate, I think you'll see uh, the third party have some impact and somebody who can get generate some money. Yeah. Hello, who's this? What up, man? It's knowledge, man. What y'all been on? Knowledge, what's Peace, poppin', knowledge. Brother? How you doing, King? I'm alright, man. Hey, I ain't gonna lie, man. Finally, y'all got Candace on over there. And I like that because everybody don't think the same. And I read her book. She has some good points. You know what I'm saying? She's saying that the black community is accepting her now. I think some people are always accept her, just like we accept black Republicans. Yeah, you know I mean, what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm not. I, I mean, no. I, 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 like, like you just said, everybody uh, has an audience, you know, and and everybody has people that don't like them either. So mm -hmm. it is what it is. I always say everything is a conversation, right? There's, you know, we can't get to to a, a resolution if we can't speak to each other. That's right. Absolutely. Hey, one more thing, Charlemagne. You uh, on your book rollout, you gonna do the same thing you did on uh, Black Privilege and come to Dallas? Hell yeah, I'm I'm going everywhere. I'm going I'm going everywhere on my book tour. My book comes out May 21st. I think so. Like starting that week, I'll be everywhere. I'm coming to Dallas. I'm going to Austin. I'll be all over the place. Right, man. Don't have no private parties, man. Come to the nah, people, man. I'm, I'm doing bar again. I'm gonna be right there in Barnes and Noble. <laughs> I, I, well, I'm gonna pull up on you for real, like I did all the other times. Where was I at last time in Dallas? I was at two bookstores in Dallas. I know I went to you Barnes at, and Noble. You was at Paul Quinn too. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll definitely be at Paul Quinn. Shoot the Paul Quinn College. I'll definitely be there. One last more thing. One last thing. Man, I need you. I need to talk to your people, man. I'm part of this business ERG group with uh, Salesforce, man. And I want you to pull up. Oh, okay. Uh, no, hold on. Charlamagne don't know what that means. I have no idea. I don't uh, know what he means. No, I can tell. All right. Well, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, call us up right now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. 
It's a new day. This is your time to get it off your chest. Wake up. Wake up. Whether you're mad or blessed. It's time to get up and get something. Call up now. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Good morning. Bo, 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 bo. It's your boy, Lovey, from the Bronx. Bronx, stand up. This is exactly why everybody from the Bronx needs to be searched when they walk into any facility. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning to my Breakfast Club family. Good morning, King. Peace, Good morning, brother. What up, lovey? You know, it's my born day weekend. I was born in 75 around the Shala era. 1975? Yes, yes. What'd you my queen is bringing me to, to the Poconos for the a menage for my birthday weekend. But it's with stipulation. She's telling me her girl can't make me What should I do, Playboy? What Should I pull up and not pull up? I don't know, man. I'm confused. Why are you, why are you asking me? In envy. We, yeah. don't, got, we don't know nothing wrong about person, this life. Sir. I don't know about this neither. I don't, <laughs> Just don't know about you. You asking the wrong. You asking the wrong people, bro. He asking his kings. He ain't saying <laughs> <laughs> queen. What's up? Oh, Jess, what Jess, I want your. I want your opinion as well, Jess. Lovey, why don't why don't you call Tez? Why don't you call Tez and Figaro, your work wife, and see what she would say? <laughs> That's what I was gonna do, but she's not in today. Oh. I don't know. If she took it off, and she's planning to pull up for my birthday. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know what's going on. You know, you know what's so crazy, though. You know what's so crazy. If your wife or your girl told you what it is, then that's what it is. If she told you she don't want you to with the other woman, you can't with the other woman. Mm. It's that simple. Man. What do you mean? I, I, She's the manager. I, She's the supervisor. She put it together. She's telling you what it is. This, we gonna get this menage in, but this is the stipulation. So you either want the menage or not, bro. I gotta practice yoga, man. I got. Let me get my yoga in, man. I need some ladies. <laughs> ladies, hit me up on my Instagram and give me some advice. L o v e y x s x l eight six zero. I need some advice. Goodbye, love you. Listen to your woman, right, love you. I know that's right. Hell, okay. Listen to your girl. Yeah, if your woman allows you to get a menage and she says this is the stipulations, you got to listen to your supervisor, that's bro. It, is. it ain't hard. It ain't difficult. Hello, who's this? <laughs> hey. Oh, wow, man. I still can't believe I got through. This is Dread. I am calling y'all out of the coon capital of the Midwest known as the 513. Why you calling so, the coon uh, capital? Yeah, Jesus. Yes. It is. It. I sure did. I completely don't rep that city, the nasty natty. So how old are you? Um, are you drunk? How old am I? Yes. Yeah. I, I, I'm the same age as Uncle Charlotte and DJ and we oh, right there okay. together. Okay. Oh, okay. Knocking on them 50s doors. Yes, yeah, right. you're right, because that ain't something some of these young folks would say. Yeah, that's, so, that's the only reason why I asked. That's the only reason why I asked. Yeah, no, you good, you good. Uh, and, and you know, speaking, and since I did get through it, can't believe it. Um, <laughs> yes, I'm glad, you know, she is a good addition to the to the crew because, and this ain't no uh, jocking because I don't jock, but like, oh, I thought if anybody going to come, because really I was kind of chicked out, not going to lie. Like, mm-hmm. we don't need no other chick. Uh, Cause they're gonna be soft, Absolutely. but I was like, she actually is good because she be giving y'all the run for your money. And um, Dress, if you don't I tell us why you call her Dress, Absolutely. <laughs> why Thank you, you ain't let her? Why you cut her off while she bigging Jess up? Thank you, Jay. Ain't on International Women's Day. Okay, mm, continue sorry. bigging Jess up, ma'am. <laughs> exactly, I big it up because she be bringing it with. She be bringing the little heat. And uh, <laughs> even in the funny thing, who, whoever stood up to uh, Uncle Charlotte and roasted him for his list, even I be dead. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm like, y'all got the right one finally. But I would say this on the end, on the out. Be careful of what the white man is putting in our ear, which is a bunch of white feminism, and it's ruining our families. And uh, that's just something to be aware of. I, I don't know. I don't really take for no uh, chick day and all of that. Just love to the black man, love to the black family, love to the black woman, all of it. What so, gra- so let me ask you a know. question. What grade was you smoking this morning when you woke up? She was drinking. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Trans don't need nothing to be crazy. I'm already crazy as hell. So That's right. I'm yes, right. ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Well, thank you, Dredge. <laughs> Peace, Dredge. Black power, y'all. Oh, my God. Y'all look crazy. Are we crazy? Yeah. That let that lady talk for three minutes. <clears throat> y'all know she high or drunk or something. Mm. She enjoying herself. It's a Friday. I ain't mad at her. All right. Well, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, call us up right now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Everybody, it's DJ MV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. 
We got a special guest in the building. Rich Dirty Bronx. <laughs> Rich Dirty Bronx. <laughs> French <laughs> Montana. <laughs> what up, French? How you doing, my brother? You know where that intro came from, right? You know who called me that? <laughs> yeah, man. I'm right doing that, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, right? It's, we were in iHeart, right? We were in Vegas. And I was like, yo, French, you was a... <laughs> I was like, damn, I'm proud of you. You was a Dirty Bronx. Oh, Dang, man. That's what I said. But I was so proud of him because I didn't see him French come up from the slums. Like, you know, people talk about where they came from and, and the things that they did, but French used to be in the dirty BX clubs and the dirty Brooklyn clubs and the dirty Queens clubs making the DJs play his music. And he was never, that was French. That's where you would see French. I'm like, damn, you came a long way yeah, to, I, I, yeah, to, to Vegas stages. Yeah, I saw him before that. Yeah. I saw yeah. him right before that. Yeah. When Max was, <laughs> no, I mean, the, the never ignorant getting goals accomplished, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like Coke Boys, creation of kings everywhere. Yeah. Oh, you already got it prepared when you yeah, have to be humble under God. <laughs> <laughs> you already prepared. They gonna, if they ever need to use this, this is what they're going to use. And that's one of my favorite joints on the album, which is the, the intro. It's, it's yeah, called yeah. Dirty Bronx. Thank you, thank and, you, And bro. you kind of talk about everything, where you came from, everybody talking about um, what the was that ish you about you. on that? Um, oh, see? Oh, see, oh, see. Yeah, yeah, time's OC. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. talk about everybody, people comparing you to Chinks and, and, yeah. and Max with Wave and, and all that. So I think that's that's one of the, the dopest joints on there. But Thank why you. Mac and Cheese 5 and what took so damn long, French? I felt like, you know, I needed I needed to get everything out the way then go back to the mixtape vibes. I feel like the game, I always try to go with a where the puck is going, not where the puck is at. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I feel like the game need mixtapes. I feel like we lost a lot of... You know, it's like that feeling is not there no more. It's like, you know, like albums is, is dope. Everybody's getting used to it. I feel like the mixtape game, just like, I want to hear the Wayne mixtapes. I want to hear Wiz Khalifa drop orange. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and, and I just, you know, just want to get back to that vibe. And I want to lead, lead the wave with the mixtapes. I like how you set the tone with Dirty Bronx. Why did you feel the need to confront like all the negativity that's been directed towards you? Because I wanted to get that out the way so mm -hmm. we could focus on the music. Mm hmm you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, it's like I learned from, from, from Eminem, you know, the tactics he used. I learned mm -hmm. from, you know, Jay when he did 444 and I learned from, you know, I'm like a student of the game. So it's like, you know, this is, this is me interviewing myself in my own album just in case, you know, cause you got your fans, but then you also got your haters that listen to your music. Mm -hmm. So the haters gonna hear themselves in there and your fans gonna be right there like I told you. Mm -hmm. So it's like, that's the kind of vibe I was going with, you know? Why well, like, I ended on five. When? Five. Because we do need more mixtapes. Why, why are you ending it on five? Man, because I just wanted to give it my all and just leave it the right there. Line, yeah, 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 yeah. And just start okay. something new. But you never know. You know, Jay-Z made the black album and he, and he backed out of it. And, mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so it's like, you never know. Oh, so this is a retirement album? I just no, thought this was the no, end no, of the no, series. No, just oh. the, the end of the series. Mixtape okay. yeah, yeah. series. What do you do to make all your money, French? Me? Yeah. Man, I just hustle. I've been hustling for a long time. I mean, we know. You ain't listen to Dirty Bronx. How many albums he sold? How many records he sold? I know that. Sold, you know, like... By the way, that, that was the beauty of Dirty Bronx because you put a lot of things in perspective. I, I yeah. think I had knew that you was the most screamed African-born artist. Yeah. But I didn't know you had sold that many records. Yeah, what I mean, I was million? No. Yeah, like 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 a hundred million between mines and all the features that I was yeah, doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you figure like Unforgettable alone is like thirteen million. Mm -hmm. so that's yeah. just like oh my you know, god, that's, yes. that's, that's like by itself. <laughs> so, but set, I mean, man, I've been on some big record. My catalog is crazy. Yeah, but you say on the album, you say people think it's just your features. Yeah, but you the main feature. Yeah, because okay. you know you, you still look at the all the way ups, and you look at like you know what I'm saying, like the loyal Chris mm -hmm. Brown and all of those, like you know. I was part of some big features, and 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 you know, like the catalog is bad. I still ain't selling yet. I'm thinking about selling it, and just buying mm -hmm. like this building across the street from you. Mm -hmm. Right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. How much you think your catalog worth? I don't know, but I always felt like you know, if somebody's trying to buy something from you, mm -hmm. then guess you know, then then how much money are they gonna make? Ain't nobody right. buying that to take a loss. Yeah. So you know, I always looked at it like that. At, w at one time, well, if, if you know French, you know when, when French goes out and, and he knows you. He, he's gonna invite you to his party, right? That's who French yeah. is as a person. Like, if, if y'all smoking, y'all smoking together. Y'all drinking, he's gonna take care of you, he's gonna make sure you're good. Then there was one time where you just stopped, right? Because you said you had to get back healthy. Yeah, you yeah. stopped drinking, you stopped smoking. Are you still in that, that phase and no more drinking or smoking? Or Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely, man. You know, you know when you sit across from like a billionaire or something, you know, as soon as he take that sip of liquor or take that puff of weed, like you're already richer than him. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I just, and I had to focus up. We lost a lot of money. We made a lot of bad business deals with, you know, might, might have overslept and lost a bag, might have did this, might have did that, you know. And I got a chance to make some generational wealth and change generations down, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So I was like, you know, let me just focus up and not, not leave no bags on the table.
Were you ever fearful? I know a lot of artists say that sometimes they feel like that drug or that alcohol puts them in the right zone. Were you ever fearful like, damn, if, if I don't drink like I used to or I don't smoke, that I, I might not be in the same zone as I was in making pop that or you ain't worried about nothing or, you know, <clears throat> some of those other records? Um, Man, I've been popping perks for like 10 years. You know what I'm saying? Oxy's perks, drinking this 20 years. It, it got to the point where I wasn't getting drunk or high anymore. Right. Like now I'm I'm higher than I was when I was taking the drugs. It's just like my body just like, you know, it's like in shock. But I, I feel like making music is a passion, is love. It had nothing to do with drugs. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It was just the drugs kept the negative shit around me. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. the people. I lost people when I stopped doing drugs. I didn't lose the passion. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because, mm -hmm. you know, when you drink and you take drugs, you let, you know what I'm saying? You let the devil in. You let, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, I was inviting everybody and everybody wasn't inviting me. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Everybody um, um had motives and some of them had the negative. I mean, I, I don't mind helping people that have motives. You know what I'm saying? We That's that, that that's how we get our blessings. But there's people that have motives that have negative motives towards you. I help anybody that have a positive motive towards me. So I feel like I was letting the negative and the positive. And that's why things started happening and this and that. Yeah. What about your passion for sleeping with rappers' wives? That's inviting the devil Damn. in too, French. Huh? <laughs> yeah, you say, come on, you say on the album. Oh, <laughs> Smash Brothers. <laughs> yes, we are. Yeah, come on. And nah, that's crazy. You've been, you were the number <laughs> one sniper. Nobody say hi like a <laughs> heard you. Know? <laughs> <laughs> right, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> but, that's, but that's where hand came from. Because <laughs> you are. They would be in the club and they'd be like, you know, people try to do business deals in the middle of the club. They'd be like, hand. Hey. <laughs> so, so, so let me tell you the story about that. Okay. Me and Drake was first working on the record. Another you know, sniper. Yeah, working on the record. Mm -hmm. The first line he said, he was like, on double MG, I'll f a rapper's wife. He was like, we should start off like that. Then I just took it and I just ran with it and I just made the first line that. But what that got to do with doing it in real life, though? Huh? What that got to do with actually, <laughs> what that got to do with actually no, fing rapper's know, wives it, in real life? No, honestly, I never did. I never fing nobody's wife. Okay, okay. No rapper wife. Okay. No. So it's just rap. Rap cat. Oh, yeah, this is rap cat. Okay, <laughs> okay. All right, we got more with French Montana, huh? When we come back, it's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilarious, Charlamagne the Guy. We still kicking it with French Montana. His album is out today, Mac and Cheese 5. Charlamagne? You, em you embrace a lot of um, young artists from the Bronx, too. Like you got, yeah, you yeah, got, shot, got a few of them on this project. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Shout, um, shout out to D. Thanks. Shout out to Kenzo. She in the back. They both from the Bronx. Mm -hmm. I got, I got forty one. They're from Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Forty one. Yeah. Yeah. They on the album. Forty one. Jew, Jen Carter too. Yeah, yeah. Jen Carter. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They from Brooklyn. Yup. Right, what, what makes you want to embrace the, the young generation like that? Man, I always looked at myself like the bridge to the music game. Mm -hmm. I felt like I could always tap in with with the Kanye's. You know what I'm saying? The J's or whatever it is, and still tap back in with the with the pop smokes, the schmurders, and do this, do this, and that. I felt like I was always like the bridge in between. Mm -hmm. How hard is it to break an artist nowadays? Man, I think the artist just gotta want it. You know what I'm saying? I think you know, there's no there, there's no certain structure or menu to it. I feel like you just can't have no plan B. You just gotta want it. You mm -hmm. just gotta go all out for it. What's the expectation though? Like, what do you like? What's the expectation for a rapper in 2024? Well, um. Like, I think there is none. Mm -hmm. There's so many. I think there is none. I mean, there's so many. Right. Way, yeah. <laughs> I don't feel like you could. Put, I, yeah, with, with social media, I don't feel like there is none. I feel like you know, you just gotta, you just gotta have that character. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, you you those big brother conversations though. Like you know the, because I know the, whether it's is recording and, and spending or, or or being on time and all the stuff that you f***ed up with. Do you have those big brother conversations? Like let me, yeah. let me walk you down. Yeah, he know. I saw him in the studio. I'm like, yo, bro, there's no other place you should be at outside of this studio. Like that that room right there, them four walls. That's your bank. That's your vote. Anywhere out of that room, you're no good to nobody. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He just came home from jail. So mm -hmm. like you out of out of that room, you're no good. Because, you know, you're liable to get in trouble. You're liable to get caught up with the wrong things. You're liable to be around the wrong things. So I just feel like that room right there, you know what I mean? Like you just got to make as much music as you can. Because you, you never know. You never know when you're going to make that one record that's going to change your life forever. And how do you deal with the artists now? Because you've seen everything. I mean, you didn't see shootouts. You didn't see death. You didn't see so much because if you've been there. Yeah. But you also do know part of your music is being there. Yeah. And, and being able to write that and rap that and all that, you know? No, no I'm saying you're going, you, you're going to do that. But, but sometimes you get caught up too much in that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you come home from, from jail. You want to live the life. You want to do this, do that. I mean, it's just... 
when 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 things happen to people they never expected to happen, that's why it happened. Yeah. Sure. When things happen to people you never expected it to happen, that's why it happened. Mm hmm. Chanks would have never went to that hookah spot 4 a.m. In the morning, yeah. In the morning. By himself. If, if he, you know what I'm saying? No, yeah, he has yeah. security. He has security? Yeah. He has security with him and everything. Well, he got shot. It was in the car, so I mean. Yeah, he got yeah. shot six times in the car. Yeah, he, has he has security with him and everything. It was 4 in the morning, leaving the hookah spot, going chasing the joint on the side of a road. It's like, you know what I mean? Like, he didn't expect that to happen. That's what I'm saying. Mm hmm so, so what's up when, when you think about all of the violence that you've seen, were you afraid to sign drill rappers? Hell no. We was drill before the drill. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because everybody was saying, like, there was a period it felt like labels were about to back we away from drill. We were drill music before drill music. Me and Max B, we yeah. had beef with the whole New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so you don't think drill is a sound. It's just a... a it's a, a lifestyle. A, a lifestyle, Chicago, energy. Yeah, Chicago is like that. So what what is drill, D-Thing? What is drill right now? Yeah, so now drill is like anybody do it. Like you could just come from college and just had a whole good life and just drill rap now. Like just do that now. Mm -hmm. it wasn't like that for me when I was come for me. We had to really do it. Like, but that's the problem though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like a lot of rap. Like you saw Fat Joe say 95 percent of his lyrics were lies. Not this new generation. Nah, he started lie. drilling, bro. Okay, you can't lie. You, that's bad. But we can't lie. And you don't get enough credit for the community service you do. I mean, this around the world. Yeah. And you donated 500 canoes? Yeah, to Makoko. It's wow. crazy. It's like the city that's under the water. It's, it's like, I've never been nowhere that's like that. It's like you, you take a canoe from like, un, from like the bridge side and it, and you like, you, you, you stay on the canoe for like a half an hour. And then you just approach this city that's all underwater. Mm. Like, nah, it's crazy. Like, yeah, like half of the, half of the cribs under the water. Then like, only like the two floors up and people just, Nah, the living was crazy when I went there. I think like three hundred thousand people. I don't know. I don't know how it got like that, but it's one of them wonders of the world. Oh, she said, was it a flood or something? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to say. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know the history, but it was just a blessing to see that, and a blessing yeah. to see that I could help. The same thing with Uganda. We went and opened up a hospital over there. Same thing with Morocco. We went. Two thousand. Yeah, yeah a quick relief one. Yeah, for that for Morocco, mm -hmm. same thing for the Bronx. Open up school program. I mean, whenever we get a chance to give, we always gonna give back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what for real. It, for it, real. It, was it true that you said that J Cole was supposed to executive produce my first Your album? First yeah, album? yeah. J Cole heard heard my first album in in Miami. We was all in Trina house, and I was playing it for him, and he was like, "Yo, bro, let me executive produce it." Then we was on tour with um Club Paradise tour with Drake, mm -hmm. so we all just jumped on tour. But honestly, part of me was like, yo, I'm going to let him just put his name on it. But if I'm going to do an album with J. Cole, I'm going to want J. Cole to do it with me from the beginning so I could benefit from the J. Cole experience. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I come to him with an album already done. Like, yo, just slap your name on it. Who do you think mm -hmm. you have better chemistry with, Cole or Drake? I feel like Drake for something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because y'all like, like Sniper yeah. 1 and 2. Y'all go back and forth. Nah, Drake, yeah, yeah. Drake, nah, Drake my twin, man. That's that's my bro. Me and him definitely got better better chemistry. Just, just because, you know, when Drake first came... And people didn't really know who he was. He came in, you know, the New York and this and that, and we met up. And again in Miami, when I was doing Ross' um, album, and we did Stay Scheming. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Drake first heard it when Ross played it for him, and he was like, "Yo, I heard the whole album. I want to do this joint." Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and and just like we're building out from Pop Dad to you know the whole thing, I felt like like it was it was more natural. That's crazy. That's two of Drake's best verses. Well, Stay Pop, Scheming and Pop Dad. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. It was it was it was moments. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It was moments that was crazy. Who smashed more Kardashians? You and Drake? Jesus Christ. Okay. All right, well, we appreciate you for joining us. Man, thank you for having me. Ladies and gentlemen, Mac and Cheese 5, make sure you get it. It's out today. Salute to D Thanks. Salute to Kenzo B. Yes. Yep. And it's the for breakfast. For real, for real. New York and New York. Hey, wake up. Wake up. You're locked into the breakfast club. It's topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. If you're just joining us, we're talking about getting massages from the opposite sex. Now, this conversation started from Mason Cameron talking about having trainers and, and women using male trainers. And then we heard Charlemagne said recently that you got a massage from a male and you said it was amazing. And what, what, what did he say about? He said that the guy massaged every part of his body, even his mouth. Not every part of the body, but he definitely gave me a mouth massage, which is something I never had before because apparently there's two muscles in your mouth. And I'm the type of person, uh, you know, because of like anxiety and stuff like that, like I'm always like grinding my teeth a little bit mm -hmm. or like you know, I open my mouth real wide. I don't know why. Hey, and so it's like he, he 
he, he, he massaged mm. these two muscles in my mind. And it hurt like hell. How do you massage mm. him? With his hands. Oh, okay. Like it's like he like it's like a it's like a, a technique. Anybody out there that does this massage thing I'm talking about, I know you know what I'm talking about, but it's mm -hmm. like these two corners right here. Yep. Mm -hmm. And he just put them in and he kinda like tugs mm -hmm. on it a little bit and it's painful. Well, man, it's very, uh, very stress relieving. Okay. So you're a, you were able to open your mouth wider after, like, what type of effects? That I, well, I haven't, I haven't been grinding my teeth. Oh, as much since, since then. that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't been grinding my teeth wow. uh, since that much since then. But I, I mean, the pro I've never had a male masseuse until that time, and he did a, a, a fantastic job. But it's just like football players and basketball players who got male trainers. Who you think's massaging them and rubbing on their muscles? Yeah, no, absolutely. Like but I just never heard of a mouth massage. Uh, yeah, it's out there. I'm, I'm, matter of fact, I'm gonna Google it right now. Yeah, matter of fact, you should. Um, yeah, when I go to when I go to physical therapy <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and there's a male masseuse, mm -hmm. that's that's different. But when you go to a massage place and the lights are low and it's mm -hmm. intimate mm -hmm. and the candles are burning, yeah, I would just prefer a woman to massage me. That is just me. I, but you it, did, um, you did have a male masseuse before. And you listen to everything. Absolutely. But it wasn't that. It was it was me and my wife together. It was a couple's massage and they were mm -hmm. supposed to teach us how to how to give a massage. Mm -hmm. And the dude came in, diesel, dreads, mm -hmm. brown skinned brother. Very sexy. Now, see, the fact that yes. you described him <laughs> makes me think that this was a Frico case. Okay. Oh, <laughs> but he got my charged God. with a Frico. But, <laughs> but you know what I mean? But during the massage, I couldn't enjoy the massage because mm -hmm. this big brother, mm -hmm. Diesel, that's, with was, dreads, that's, that's your was massaging that's me with your oil. insecurity. No, it was. And, that's I, your insecurity. and I, don't, I don't want it again. I don't know why you're so insecure mm -hmm. if you ain't never had your butt touched. Like, mm. like I don't have those insecurities. Like okay. I ain't think of nothing when that man was massaging me. I didn't think about nothing except for this was a good massage. Okay, mm. that's nothing you. in no way, shape, or form. Right. Well, okay. But that's you. this is a real thing: clinical oral facial massage. That's what it's called. I get I get that all the time, and the woman that does it is is dope. She and she it, does an amazing job. It alleviates right. clicking or popping of the jaw, clenching, locked jaw, and limited mouth open range. Uh, and it releases muscles. And I've never seen this word fascia. Involved with chewing and jaw clenching, so this is a, a thing. So mm -hmm. when he when he massages you, does he reach over you like? Yeah, yeah. No, he was on the side. Yeah, you know you have to lay. Uh, Y'all did it from the side. What'd you say? He was on the side. <laughs> oh, he's on the side. Yeah, he told me, sometimes yeah, when, he, when he was on one side, I had to turn this way. Mm -hmm. He was on this side, I had to turn that way. Mm -hmm. But listen, if you've never had a clinical oral facial massage, trust me, okay. it is worth it. Okay. Yes. Nice. What about you? I enjoy massages from the same sex, um, although I have had massages uh, from a male, and I like the pressure more mm -hmm. from a guy. Mm -hmm. um, however, I ain't gonna lie, I do get excited, like especially when they be like turn over and you massaging my stomach and mm -hmm. under my breast and all that, and I just be like, stop. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not gonna lie, yo. I don't. I don't know. I I just I can't. I, mm -mm. Well, let's go to the phone lines. Hello, yeah. who's this? This is Kevin from Brooklyn. Hey, Kevin from Brooklyn. What's going on, Envy? How you doing? I'm doing Tell good. Man. Jeff, I love you, baby. I love you too, baby. We're, we're, we're talking about massages yeah. from the um the same sex to opposite sex, brother. Talk to us. Yeah, I had to dip out on a um, massage the other day because <laughs> it was same sex. I'm not going to call the company name. Well, yeah, it was same sex, and I wasn't feeling that. Okay. I can't have a next man rubbing me. I, I just, I can't do that. You right. never played any type of sports in high school or anything like that? It's different. Yeah. It's different, it different when the lights no. are low and you're laying on the thing and there's a candle lit yeah. and then the music is playing. Yeah, because then we all in the locker room. Yeah, like, it's, it's, a, it's different. Y'all, I think y'all nah, getting on the low. It's something about a man, because see, my lower back hurts. And it's something about a man rubber down there. I can't, you know, I can't. Yeah. I mean, it's not sitting right with me. Yeah. Well, Charlemagne is upset because not a lot of men are, not all men are open up to other men, are open to other men touching I just don't men. know why everybody's so insecure. It's not, it has nothing to do with insecurity. This is very much got to do with insecurity because yeah. if in your mind you're thinking, man, I might get turned on by this guy, man. I don't want this guy touching me because I might like it. That's that's your problem. That's something no, you need to do. No, that's not everybody's problem. Envy <laughs> said that. Not everybody Envy said the that. same thing you said. He said, when the guy told me to turn around, I tooted up a little bit. No, I did not say that. <laughs> you just can't make up stories. You I just can't make up stories. He just made that up. You just can't that. make stuff up. Hello, yeah. who's this? Hello, my name is Monica. Hey, Monica. Hello, Monica. Good morning. Good morning. Now, it says you, you're uncomfortable receiving uh, massages from other men? Yes, I am. Why? Hmm. Um, Because I feel like I make noises that I'm if, it, if I'm enjoying it. Yes. And so it sounds sexual, even though it may not be sexual. Girl, yes. And I usually tend to make the guy think, oh, well, like, she might be into me, and it may go somewhere that it's not supposed like, to. Like what kind of noises? 
Well, you a freaky boy. You a, you a yellow freaky boy, man. What's your problem? I'm just saying, I never, I never got a massage. Mm, like. Yeah, yeah. But I get what you're saying, though. Yeah, girl, come with a whole soundtrack, especially when they tell you. Yeah, no. Nah, and that's just how I am. And that's I don't know how to not be that. Way. I just rather get one from a woman because I'm not interested in them. You know, you yeah. bring up, you bring up a good point. Like every single time I, I get a massage, you know, from a woman. You know, you do tend to get a little direct. You know yeah, what I'm saying? You yeah. do, you do. Yeah. But I've never, when I had it with the guy, that didn't happen at all. Did you make right. sounds? Did you make sounds? Like, mm. Right, because there's no interest. And if they're making you feel good, like, you can't right. help but sound like it feels good. And, yes. and, and by the way, the guy made me feel good, but I, I didn't get erect. Because you, you're not you attracted did you, to the guy. Did you, did you, no. did you go, oh, yeah, mm. because when they hit your lower back, I'm telling you, like, sometimes it's like, uh... Like, oh my God, yes, like right there. And then when they turn you over <laughs> and they, they go b- below your belly button, it's like, oh my God, like what you doing? Like, <laughs> you get all jittery yeah, and all that. the third time she said, well, they turn you over. <laughs> Jesus but real, that's a full body. They do your back and then they turn you they turn you over and they do everything else. Uh, we have a, a massage therapist on the line. Hello? Hey, yes. Hey, what's your name, bro? My name's Chris. Are you brown skin with dreads? Uh, no. All right, I'm, cool. Just making sure. I'm brown skin sure. with a bald head and a beard. All right, cool. Oh, yes. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, brother. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to be on here. Uh, so I've been a massage therapist for 12 years, and uh, I have that problem majority of the time where the husbands have a hard time working with me. But it's not about that. It's the muscular care that needs to be done for our society that we're not addressing. Biometrical movement is the key to internal healing. Mm -hmm. And so what's happening in our society now is we're quick to biochemical things in our mouth, but we're not doing the things that we need to do on a muscular level to heal. That's right. Yeah. You got to move that trauma up out of your body. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so with that, there's 656 individual muscles 360 joints and 208 bones mm. that nobody knows anything about. Do you do the uh, oral facial massage? Yes, it's called interoral massages where you go into the mandible, you release the masseter, and it helps with the TMJ. That's right. It, it hurts. Yeah. It hurts, but it feels so good. Afterwards. I do neuromuscular therapy. Neuromuscular therapy is trigger point release to the actual belly of the muscle. And it actually helps elongate the individual muscle from the insertion to origin. Okay. He couldn't do my massage. Not the way he's talking. You got to be quiet the whole time. Anyway, I'm over here like, oh my God. I don't even hey, know words he's saying. I'm just like, oh yes, come you, teach me. <laughs> you do tennis elbow, bro? And I do tennis elbow, uh, golfer, uh, hip flexor, rotator cuff. Mm. You guys need to do yourself some research on neuromuscular therapy. Oh, I love it. I'm, I'm, you, I'm, I'm about to go get me a massage today because of you. I'm going, I'm about to. Yes. Go. I got so many points at Massage Envy. Mm. So, You're not yeah, going to get definitely. it like him. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever want to check out Massage Care out of uh, Conway, South Carolina, I opened up my business and that's what I'm focusing on. Oh, you in South Trying Carolina? To oh, he excited now. Yes, sir. Okay. He gonna fly down there to you. <laughs> he so flies into nah, nah, nah. I'm gonna get another order. I can't let a male touch me in South Carolina. <laughs> what? Hey, I'm from DC. See, that's the perception. Okay. <laughs> See? Um, See? Life, life trauma, childhood trauma causes us not to want to be touched. Mm-hmm. That's real. We have to deal with that trauma. Listen, you Thank ain't you, brother. You, you, he, he is not lying in no way, shape, or form. Salute to that brother. He's you full of, full of dude. Yeah, he Why? definitely is. Yo, nah, I can't let a man, another male touch me from South Carolina. So, I said, touch me in South Carolina. What's the difference? Because of the childhood trauma that I experienced <laughs> yeah, in South Carolina. Yeah, I was gonna say he low okay? key just All told you. All the times you. I got touched in South Carolina by people that wasn't supposed to be touching me. Okay? Oh my god. Now, now laugh at that. Let's see, let's see, see you get out of this one. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. The fun police over there. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Good morning, everybody. 
Everybody, it's DJ NV, Jess Larry, Charlamagne, the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Hello, this, this, this not a guest, man. This is no, our guy. He's our family member. Okay, this is our guy. This is the first guest you see yourself that was that ever wall. in Period. studio uh-huh. here at the Breakfast Club. First, and guest. first guest. And it was our first big viral moment also. That's not the same about, time. I'm talking about two, two different, different situations, you by the way. Me? Okay. <laughs> you hear me? You hear me? Always moments. very important to preface with that. You That's hear right. me? Ladies and gentlemen, Ray J's in the Ray building. Ray J. Hey! I love. Man, I'm so happy to see y'all. I'm just holding it in. I'm happy to and see I'm you so too, brother. And I'm so happy to see you. Thank you. I'm happy to see you too. Yeah. What's happening, Willie What's Ray? What's up, man? We got a new network. I see. Ooh. I see. First of all, I need. Let, 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 what happened with uh with Raycon? Nothing. It's just you know we've reached like a certain height, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that they can definitely continue to move mountains with the company going into like you know home products and stuff like that i always just like to have fun Mm -hmm. like if it's not fun and it's a little too critical or a little too exhausting which it wasn't but just to be in an arena like starting our own network you know 20 years in that space Mm -hmm. our expertise and knowledge and the way we shoot stuff and our story arcs everything is probably is to me better than everything that's out there now. So, so you still have equity in Raycon? No, no, no. You Shout built, out to Raycon. But you built yeah. that though. Like that that, yeah, that brand yours. is that brand because of you. But he built it yeah. and sold it. So you sold it. Yeah, and I, well, I sold I sold it back to Raycon. Got you. Got yeah, you, got I sold you, it back you. to Raycon. I, I you know it wasn't for sale. Yeah. Um, for another investor to come in. God, I gotta get you some lotion. I know, that's what I was saying. And then yeah. I, I needed the lotion and the brush. Yeah. You don't yeah. need the brush. And it's I was in just... my bag. Now I'm just like, you know what? I'm good. I'm humble. So, what's so, the name of this network? The network is called the Tronics Network. Why are they called the Tronics Network? The Tronics Network. Because it's, the, we look at the Tron as like a matrix. You know what I'm saying? Like a manifestation tool. Um, that's the only reason why we're still here is just because of. Prayer and, and manifestation and making adjustments when you make mistakes mm-hmm. to, for for growth. Mm-hmm. Um, so Tronics, you know, I had the Raytronics company uh, before we sold Scooty Bike, and we just we we felt like the Tron was speaking to us from the Elohim, and so you know, Tronics Network is that digital ratchet reality network that's at the cutting edge of the change. So you be competing with Zeus. Well, if I'm competing with Zeus, I'll be competing with myself. Hmm. Talk okay. more about that if you can help. I'm just saying, I mean, remember Bow Wow and I was in, uh, we, we pulled up and I was talking I about that. Zeus. I was talking yeah, about working that. with Zeus and then yeah, yeah. Bow Wow was going big. I'm like, that's my people. We're partnered. Yeah, you yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. That, that's, that was the beginning. Right. So that was the beginning of their kind of. Got it. They, so, people started to recognize Zeus when we did the conversation. We started with the conversation. Yeah. We gave Zeus their first fight, which sounds a little, yeah. but um, <laughs> we gave Zeus their first fight, which was Roly and Mangina. Mangina's on our new network. And then their other biggest fight. These are the things that kind of ignited them to kind of drive the narr- narrative that way. Hazel E and Masika. Mm. Right. So those two things, you saw this big flux go up and then. Mm. And then it all, it all, you know. Like you we, own a part of Zeus? No. Oh, nope, yeah. nope. And you know we, we had shows on Zeus. Though. Yeah, we had the best shows, like even baddies. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I mean, a lot of a lot of people get amnesia. Right. Because you so, say competing with yourself makes, makes no. it seem like you know, yeah, you it had is. Both, you on both. Well, well, not competing against myself as ownership, but we did this network not solely to to compete against Zeus, um, but to just give you a balance of what it looks like, right? So you got all of this, but if we give you that same kind of intensity with a with a story arc that leads you somewhere, whether it's emotional or crying or or happy or whatever it is, educational, mm-hmm. something has to be there to create the story so people can follow something. If not, then for me, I don't do that kind of show. And I want to show people like what a ratchet show and a balanced show looks like at the same time. What right. does that look like? Yo, well, That's yo. actually R&B if you think about it. R&B? Ratchet and balanced. Wow. We're brainstorming. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, it, it, you know, yo, we have one show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I haven't called you guys to tell you about it, but you guys start the show off. It's the Breakfast Club kicks. It's like you guys are in this. Like, how do we start it if you didn't tell us about it? We don't know anything about this, right? So, <laughs> it's a really good show, right? Okay. So it's called the Fight Club. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna show you guys. It's a really good show, and then you'll see what it is. It's light. I mean, it's, it's like, like fighting. Yeah, it's people fighting, but that show is catered for that. So there's a lot of other shows. Like we have Inside the Network, we have Going on a Safari, we have uh, the Girls Club, uh, the Cook Off. Like we have shows like that. But then, just like the conversation, I felt like people were like 
teasing you and then they started to get to this deep conversation when when we did it it's just let's go right into it same What's with the, the balance fight? in fight club though there's like, no the, the 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 balance in fight club is the comedic like edit with the fighter right you started to say there is no balance <laughs> i was I mean, when you first start because that was the truth <laughs> because i think that. there there isn't a balance in trying to create another story only to end at the fight, right? Gotcha, gotcha. It's straight about what it is, but it's com it's comedic, it's refreshing, the jokes are going. So when you're watching it, you're not like disgusted mm -hmm. if you were just to watch it and hit play, which we do have all the bonus footages on all the shows. You get like five or six clips and you can just watch it unedited. How much is subscription? $4.99. $4.99. Yeah, mm. but it's premium. This is the premium yeah. stuff. Any scripted drama, you know, comedy shows, like any... <laughs> Cause you you do a lot of things, right? Yeah, well, we we're creating as we go. Okay. Um, I have like eight shows, so the eight shows that come out are dating. It's inside the network. It's um, it's the, a, a big transgender show, the okay. Girls Club. We also have the gay. It's called the what? The Girls Club. Oh, wow. And then there's another. Do they want to be called that? Or have you have you yeah. ran that by them? Absolutely. Okay. I mean, I run it by everybody. And I, and one thing that I don't do is my mission isn't to make the reality star look bad. Yeah, because I'm in the same position, and what what I'm here to do is to ignite the numbers, so our points could be on the board like basketball players. Mm -hmm. So what's the girls' club? Break that down. Yeah. It's uh, 13 transgenders, transgender women. They're super cool. They're super lit, and they're in there to tell their story and to survive. You know this big moment, and you know make a name for themselves. And it's it's one of the loudest shows we have. Sydney Star is the star of it. She helped. Uh, put that together with me and it started off with her trying to do an audition show a love show in atlanta and dude attempted murder like 17 shots like popped off and it's like oh, what? Was, yeah it was crazy it's in it's in it's in there it's all y'all got that on camera yeah shout out to the rod from the gay agency shout out to the gay agency as well what the hell is the, the gay agency, agency? a gay, gay agency. agency yeah oh yeah so listen with this show is there like a, like it's like a survival show or is it like a theme like what is it it's, it's similar to we did bad girls club mm -hmm. with with oxygen we did bad girls all-star battle but it was it's just similar to the bad girls that was club all-star battle you know yeah. bad girls club. so that that yeah. proves to you that natalie and i worked together a long time ago so i was able to hit her tell her love and hip-hop hollywood wasn't really coming back i think you should work with zeus this is a good play for you you'll have power control ep mm -hmm. credit all of that and boom you know what i mean and that's so now you're about to steal all these uh all Lee's thunder. You're about to take <laughs> all of those people you would have said, hey, go over there to Lee. You're taking for yourself now. Exactly. Yes. You, yeah. call, him, yes. Exactly. you call him Lee? Oh, Lemmy. Lemmy. Damn. Lemmy. Lemmy. I, I can't remember his name. Yeah, bad. because my other co-founder from Raycon is Ray Lee, so I was like, hmm. Yeah, he knows how. Got you. Got you. Mm. All right, we got more with Ray J. When we come back, don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Breakfast Club was still kicking it with Ray J, DJ, NB, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the God. Ray J is still here with us. So now recently, on some on some other news, I was looking at TMZ. They they robbed your cars? They stole your cars? Two Maybachs, missing. Like what? Out of nowhere? From where? Right on our moment. They it's in they're in Reno right now. The cars? The cars? Yeah. They found and and uh, we was we landed sometime in the middle of the night somewhere. Mm -hmm. But the, the cars were supposed to pull up, pick us up, you know, we had we had the suits and we was gonna go corporate and then it just kinda like, you know what I'm saying? Somebody transported them and then they stopped answering the phone, then we tracked the cars and it was in Reno at like this casino and chop shop. They were yours? Mm. They were mine. Oh, so I bought man. one and uh Truth, who is my business partner, he's the one that Helped me close the deal with Raycon. Um, he bought him one. And we were just like, you know what I'm saying? Just feeling good to come to New York. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. How much Not, the Raycon check was, man? <laughs> you know, it it was it was in another, like, world. Because I feel like we did so much. Like, it was so hard um, to just break the code and understand, you know, technology and hardware. You mm -hmm. know, the 3PO mm -hmm. services you need or the warehouses. Customer service. The CMO has to be right. The CFO has to be right, right? So even with this new company, like I know so much from strategic marketing and what we've done there to conversion marketing to and, and all these other like shortcuts that we have. So it's only right to mm -hmm. implement that into the, the reality shows because I never lost in reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I would say that I'm the, um, I'm the- Reality show king? I do that. I was gonna base it like you know Tiger Woods of it, but um, but uh, I didn't. T Tiger, no, that. Tiger wasn't. That, that's Tiger true, wasn't Jess, the Jess first. Says no. Uh, Jess is the reality uh, show connoisseur. <laughs> Jess says no. Wait, wait. <laughs> what are you talking about? King, then, Jess. There's nobody. There's nobody bigger than me. Mm. 
I'm uh, well. At first, at first, I ain't gonna lie. At first, it was Stevie J for a long time. He had, oh, a, he had it, in that era. In that era. In that, in that era. era. It was Stevie J. Ray's after had, that era, though. Yeah. No, no, Ray no, is, no, Ray is no, at, no, well, no, no. Ray right, is well. there. This is after Ray. This is this era. This, this, this is after. after Ray? Love and hip hop is after for the love of Ray J and wow, Brandy man. and Ray J oh, and family man. business. Oh, yeah. Oh, damn, damn. <laughs> Yeah, right, right, Ray, right. you got a two-joint right. on. We've had this conversation right. before. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So in reality, mm-hmm. I, that's where I dominate. So why wouldn't I? I never thought about but that. He's also, Ray J reality. But I, I feel like also in front of the camera, but you got a lot to do with behind the camera, too. That, exactly. So I would call you the king of behind the camera, too, because no, he produces. Oh yeah. He, you know, it's all type of stuff. I'm trying to let you know. I'm giving you your props in another way. Would you put your family back on reality show? Because... People scrutinize your relationship, and no matter what you do, they all the eyes are always there. Yeah, yeah. that's that. But that's the and I and I mentioned that. All, that's what you sacrifice, really. Yeah, I mentioned that even through the first episode of Inside the Network. I break down how reality stars get the end of the stick, and it, I mean it's it's hard to the even, short end of the stick. Yeah, I mean your church is even tripping. Like it's like yeah. you, you know what I mean mm-hmm. because the ratchet scene is about to do a takeover. Mm-hmm. And it's gonna be unstoppable yeah. for like a few years, where it's gonna be on everybody's nerves. When did it go away though? Like in no. reality, reality has been ratchet since it's been, it's been on. Nah, but not yeah, this. But you never seen nothing That's like true. you never yeah. seen nothing like the Tronics Network. You've yeah. never seen nothing like the Tronics Network. At the end, you're gonna subscribe. I don't know if that's what we need right now, though, right? But what? But what am I talking about? If we do, we need that level of ratchet. Yeah, because. Watch the story arc with it. Like, okay. Yeah, this is Ratchet like, with a message. Yeah, like, Does it have a message? Absolutely. Ratchet mm-hmm. has a lot of messages because when you watch yourself in a Ratchet in- environment and you do either Ratchet things or you do the right thing, that's how you know how to make adjustments with yourself. And- okay. But what I don't want to see, and I'm pretty sure nobody is, everybody is tired of seeing people just fighting all over the place Word. all the time. So that's what he's saying about like a storyline. It's actually going to be storyline. Yeah, like like Inside stuff. the Network is like my creative directors was fighting because they were tripping off something. I just caught it on tape with the agency. What? The agency, I mean. <laughs> Got cameras set up back. No, nah, hey, nah, when they so was so fighting, good. I just hey, grabbed the table. Nah, that was just grabbed the phone. But after that, yeah, I started to have, like I got four or five shooters just ready for anything that happens now. I'm like the ratchet. I told people, I am the ratchet Shakespeare. Oh, I like. Oh, I like that. You no, know, it is. I don't. And, and and what? <laughs> I don't like okay. that at all. That sounds ridiculous, Fraser. Okay. Ratchet Shakespeare. <laughs> ratchet Shakespeare. I, li- well, I like it. Well, break well, that down. Like what is the Ratchet Shakespeare? Maybe I need to see it first. Maybe I'm judging. You know what I mean? But uh, do you guys have time today to watch the Sizzle? Absolutely. How long yeah, is the Sizzle? How long is the Sizzle? Sizzle's like a, like two minutes. Of course. Oh, we got absolutely. Two minutes. We got you know? time. Are you uh, really pushing for Brandy so and Monica to go on tour together? That's all I want. I mean, like, like what? What made you wake up one day and say, "I want this"? Is what I need? Well, I've been saying it since the since they did the uh, verses. Yeah, mm-hmm. like I got the jet for B. We got we flew out there. It was just vibe. They were going back and forth. It wasn't like a competition, but it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And Brandy, like her side, we was. Go- I was. Go- it was like a mosh pit for in a ballot. It was, like, a, it was a ballot plan, and you look to the side, and we giving her all that support. And I just think Brandy and Monica is an undeniable tour, mm-hmm. right? It, it's like you all, you both win. Last run, no matter what you feel or whatever, like how can you not mm-hmm. take that opportunity? Yeah, I love why, that. If you know it's there, why do anything else first? Yeah. And the last song of the tour, Boys Mind, close <sighs> out. God bless That'd tonight. Be crazy. That's so I told him, like, I think that's a that's a hundred million dollar. Both of them, I think they can bring in a two hundred. Who opens million. up that show though? Huh? Who opens that show? I mean, of course, Monica would have to open it, right? Yeah, have to open it. See, yeah, I would think so. I mean, because they would be co headlining. Maybe you could do something different. Maybe you could do like a song to song to song to song. Somebody has to come again. out first. Yeah. But that, <laughs> that's <laughs> not a. Yeah, yeah. RSVP. Yeah, well, yeah, that was. No, no, no. <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Brandy, like Brandy, Brandy ain't Brandy ain't having that either. She, she yeah. Don't. But the Brandy Monica tour or the Monica Brandy tour, whichever one. My, my, my title is Brandy Monica tour. Yeah, yeah. Well, she she would have to open. You right? know what I mean? I mean and tell, it's, tell it's them why. Cold headlining. But tell them why. And they can't do song for song for song because that'll be a replica of the verses again. But or no, it'll break up there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. She will open. She gets the crowd pumped. Like this is great. And then Brandy, boom. Like who, who did you think won the verses? I think Brandy. I'm Brandy. I'm yeah, Brandy all yeah. day. I don't even Not remember. just because you here. Yeah. You know, it's just no, no, Brandy. no, no. Brandy is Listen. one of my yeah, that's facts. Top three singers, R and B. I told you since I was little. Did not who, who did I um? This women's in the international month, uh-huh. women's history month. 
The first lady oh, Brandy, yeah. that was the first Brandy was the first woman that I honored. No, it was your mom, then Brandy. Yeah, it was my mom, then Brandy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, but <laughs> Brandy. You yeah. know what I'm saying? She was on the second day. I grew up on this woman. So I'm like, all right, cool. And I also grew up on Mon Monica too. And when you think of Brandy, you think of Monica and it's all right, but yeah, but Monica will open, Brandy will end it. Absolutely. Boom. Make that money. We, we've debated who got the best catalog. It's mm. not about the best catalog. It's just the best, I think the overall accolades, right? It, 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 it you know, you got not, not with music, because then you go back to like the the no, whole no. Tank, Tyrese, and Genuine, right? Tyrese is the bigger out of the three, but Genuine got the biggest records, bro. That Tyrese you is the biggest out of all three of them. Yeah, as far as movie, Tyrese. Oh, as far as Tyrese is not yeah. the biggest out of. I'm talking about like singers. Tank, Genuine. No, I think Genuine. Ty, I think Tyrese out of a is, person. I, I, popular well, no, with Tyrese all the is the most irritating. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. He's, he definitely. Mm. So he definitely is the. Like Richard, the you're not wrong. And the most right. entertaining. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's the most, the most, no. 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 He's not the most entertaining. I like irritating. I mean, he's I the most irritating. <laughs> he irritates oh, yeah. the shit out of me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Everything he's been doing lately has just been well, cringy. Y'all yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. know each other. Y'all know each other. Of course, y'all know each other. Yeah. Yeah. Him and my sister are cool friends. They always been cool. Mm. You yeah. never like them. I don't, I don't, I don't, you know what I'm saying? I don't care about Tyrese. Mm -hmm. okay. I don't like some of the stuff he be doing and saying, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But, and crying about a bunch of stuff. But I'm not going to diss Tyrese. Yes, you already did. Oh, yeah, that, that's he, gone. He's going on, he, you've done that. enough for him to go on Instagram. Remember, remember last, last time he was playing around with Eddie Murphy, remember? Last time I got mad at Tyrese. I remember. Mm -hmm. I remember. Yeah, I remember. Don't yeah. play with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't play with me, Tyrese. I don't, I don't, we don't, it's, I'm, not, I'm not like that. But still, yeah, man. Mm. Don't play with me. Yeah. Why are you turning right. to Ray Pog all of a sudden? Like, what the <laughs> hell? Like, why? <laughs> what, did you, what did you go over there and drink? Yeah. What did yeah. Tyrese just start getting shots for? <laughs> I no, I was why? Just, no, because oh, we no, asked no, yeah, because y'all was talking. We was talking about him. Mm -hmm. So if you look at his interview, he just did, and somebody missed, he said, oh, no, me and Ray J, he said something real smart. So I'm just yeah. responding. Oh. I'm just responding. Oh. You know, with him. Mm-mm. But my sister does, so it's cool. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. one of her friends, you know. So yeah, you, so it's like whatever. But stay away from me. Smart, smart, smart. All right, we got more with Ray J. When we come back, it's the Breakfast Club. Good morning, morning everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlamagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club, and yep, Ray J. That's right, Ray J. Is still here, Jess. Okay, so what's going on? What's your one princess? It's hot in here, huh? Yeah, it little is. take your coat off. You take your coat off. You probably it's kind of hot, yeah, a little bit. It's all right. What's what's really going on with that? I mean, for the fourth time, I mean, it's been a conversation for a while. Yeah. Okay, we just he's taking his armor all right now. Oh, he put his earring back in. We trying to figure it out. We seen things unfold on we TV. We yeah, yeah, you know, this from the beginning. Like y'all been through a lot together. Y'all got kids. A lot. Two beautiful babies. Mm -hmm. Yo, I want to do one more day with you guys here. I know you guys are busy, but mm -hmm. I, I'm having fun. My son is here. Oh, oh my god! I brought him with me. And it's just like it completed a lot of stuff for me because I was like, he a boy. My my daughter loved going to school mm -hmm. and, and she's in her zone, you know what I'm saying? She five, about to be six, but he four. And he like he like be wanting to be with me. And when I'm out of town and I'm not there, that's when I get emotional. Cause it's like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Just the little things of what they trying to learn mm -hmm. and who they watch is who they are like. You know what I'm saying? So he hasn't wanted to leave me. You know how you like, all right, I want to go back. Yeah. He's like, I want to be with, with you forever and ever and ever mm -hmm. and ever. You know what I'm saying? And then if I even go like to the store, he'll just start crying. So I'm like, you could come with me everywhere. Because mm -hmm. it's not like you can't. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like parents and everybody or creators be like, I need this time to die. That's that's a front, bro. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, it's just making yourself more busy than you should be for the kids. So. He here with me. He got on the plane with me. He hopped on the plane. He got on the couch. He went to sleep. He woke up in New York. Mm. You know, just having a good time. But why is Princess asking for a divorce for the fourth time, Richard? Yeah. Um, I just think that sometimes you, you reached a peak and... You said this before. Yeah, and I'm saying everyone is that next peak. Because sometimes when you break up, that one is where you're just like depressed about it and you like can't think about nothing else. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then... The next one, it gets easier and then it starts to make sense. You know what I'm saying? Because I guess happiness is important. You know what I'm saying? But for me, if, it, if my kids are happy, mm. then I don't care about happiness. And a lot of people put, they say you have to be happy to for your kids. Yeah, for sure. And I feel much more like, I feel like I have the power in my hands now. Mm. But at the same time, I would, the fact that we made the vow and I'm 100, mm -hmm. I would, I could just, I could not be happy and be happy for the kids and just ride it out and figure out which years we're going to have that's going to be great and which aren't. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm willing to not be happy to be around my kids every day. Like, no, if, that's not good because no. the, the kids are ultimately... You're right. No, no, no. I, t I get that, but it's like if you say you're going to die for your kids, mm -hmm. like you're going to die for your kids, but but you won't sacrifice your happiness for them? No. That's, no. Just no. no. I, Do you want to get a divorce, Ray? I'm just... I'm really happy. I'm happy that I'm just able to, like... Create something like, like in a, in a sense of like, give me this building and do all of this right now, mm -hmm. and let me see it. I, it's it's crazy. It's, do y'all speak? Do you have a good relationship? Yeah, we talk every day. We super cool. Like it's you all want good. To get a divorce? Right? Yeah. I don't. I just. I, I don't know what that means. You know what I'm saying? Like if we're not together, then you know. I just want to. I just want to protect her as far as like yeah. whatever the industry has or whatever it's doing. Like she's killing them in poker right now. Yes, a lot of there's a lot of millions on the table. You playing with millions of dollars. You know what I'm saying? So you just gotta protect her and protect the kids. Like you cannot. You, you're, the the kid. My kids love their mom. They look at that. They're, that's their everything so how can you not make sure that that right. figure yeah. is even if you say all this crazy shit and just call me out my name or call say I'm gonna die early whatever mm. it's still all love is mm. it true that you trying to get a pardon for um, Suge Knight from Donald Trump or you were trying to get one when he was in office mm. I mean yeah. I heard that was one of the reasons you was around him when he was in office because you were trying to get a pardon for Suge Knight no 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 and that's a, what you said when you said it I'm like that is a like a good idea when well, he it can't happen now because he's not president. Well, I was just about to see. I was I was just about to say when he wins again. That's what I was just gonna. So you going for Trump? I don't. Who we vote for shouldn't be at the topic of conversation. What can we do to help this place? Mm. Like, are, are, you know what I'm saying? Like, what are what does it look like? Right now? Mm -hmm. Are we all? Is it all messed up? It's all messed up to me. Yeah. Man, interest rates are was chilling with with with, with DT, bro. We talking one percent, three percent, two percent, two percent for all people. Everybody ate. Like yeah. we, you know what I'm saying? Four more? Damn, I don't know. I mean, I, I guarantee you this: you can't get canceled if you say you're gonna vote Donald Trump like you, you used to. Mm -hmm. Right? You know what I'm saying? Like if you said mm -hmm. that, you you risking something, right? Yeah. Now it's like I'm voting for him too. Um, but 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 listen, if you if you have your mamas and your grandma, the Donald Trump if you if you have that. your grandmas and your mamas putting your ballot in for you because they like, well, we worked hard for this, so I'm gonna put yours in, mm -hmm. and you tell them to, to go Trump. Just know that they still gonna go biting. So if you wanna yeah. vote, you gotta get out there and do it yourself. Mm -hmm. I want to do whatever you wanna do. That's what you said to Puff? And any of his parties? Oh you ever said that? my God. Ray, Ray, I'm not Ray, <laughs> Ray, how'd that Ray, <laughs> Ray, you could get the cameras going right now and wrestle Charlamagne. Mean, that'll be a good one. Ray, I'm just asking. Has those words ever been Don't let him play with you, Ray. That's the second oh, time we gotta play with you, Ray. Oh my God. <laughs> That's the second time, Ray. Cause you got you got the goons. You you know you got those goons. You, know, you, know. you got a booty goon show? No. But I do got the agency now. I do got you know what I'm saying? Okay. My transgender squad. Um and, and, the oh, and then oh squad. Suki and I yeah. we have Hangover 69. The first song is called Pipe You Down. The video's done. Okay. I wanna break it here. I want to. I want to be. I want to be on. Okay. I want it to be on heavy rotation here first. Yeah. Before I mean, anywhere else. You know what I'm saying? This yeah, is where right I there. see. This is where I see heavy roll for this because it's like, it has this like drill, this drill beat. But it, I but liked it. That was what was in the trailer, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. I it's a it. good tune. I it's like a really it. good tune, and I think mm -hmm. that here, I mean, here is where I know it should be first. Yeah. Like, but not just playing it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, you know. Oh yeah. But the, but the world gotta love it, and I want you guys to love it. And if you don't, I'm your friend. Ray's been in that That's my That's guy. Uh, I've had my quota of Ray J for the day. It's time for you to stand on business, Ray. And what I mean by that is, like, you need to do more interviews where you're talking about your business acumen and your business portfolio. Yeah, it's time now. But I, you it know, is. I couldn't do that there because it was so sealed tight. Mm -hmm. And I had to, like, you know, just watch a couple of things. But I'm in full control. I spent all my money. I spent all my money well, on this How can people network. subscribe? You didn't even tell them how they can subscribe. Yeah, to Tronics, T R O N I X Network. Dot com. You should give people 30 mm, days free where they can see if they can enjoy it first and then you'll get them clicked. Mm, he was already talking about uh, you know, people you know giving how you, it out you, you, you got to put your credit card info but anyway. I get 30 I don't think days. So. Yeah, don't do that. Like, see, you so. got to understand, DJ Envy, this is the loudest, most premium content they're ever going to get mm -hmm. 
with an arc that you can't beat that just mm, makes you feel good for four ninety nine. That I was, you've I'm never th- seen. I'm happy for you, Ray J. Ray J, ladies um, and gentlemen. Yes. I can't wait to see what the Tronic Network does. Yeah, so we are. We are, we are working. Are it's different. live now. <laughs> yes, mm-hmm. you can go and, and, and you can subscribe, pre-subscribe now. The trailer is coming. Suki has a show coming out on the Tronics Network where she's executive producing What's it. it. Called? Oh. Here's the title. Little Coochies of Las Vegas. You <laughs> Little Coochies of Las Vegas. Yeah. There's nothing real about Ray J. He's I a pro- spoof. I, I promise he is a walking you, spoof. it's about I'm all kidding. of the sexy little dancers. Oh, the right? little people. Yeah. Oh, oh shoot. Little Coochies. <laughs> but then Splits, right? Splits, who's he the first fighter on the Fight Club. Episode. I let her produce a show called Big Hoochies of Atlanta. And that's mm, the big, so that's big, big ones. Backs. Big ones. Ooh. So we got the, the, the Big Backs of ATL. Oh, is crazy. Okay. <laughs> Ray J got a show called Big Backs of ATL. Yeah. Yo, that's crazy. That's what's up. <laughs> and the Gagency's like series is like Brokeback Mountain, but the reality version. Oh, I love it. Oh my God, We're- ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yes, Ray J. Yes, yo. Tronics Network. We appreciate uh, you, brother. Man, make sure you didn't pass out yo, over there. Ray is he the is illest crazy. man. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Your execution on the donkey of the day is something to behold. Is it a read? He gave me donkey of the day and I deserve it. People need to know. Well, need... you need to tell them. I you? am. you have the voice. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. It's time for donkey of the day. It's a read, <laughs> but you're so good at it. You're trying to be a fake-ass Charlemagne. There's only one Charlemagne to go. Damn, um, Charlemagne. Who you give a donkey of the day to now? Well, Sexy Red, Donkey of the Day goes to a 26-year-old Evansville woman named Lindsay Pearson. Now, I get on this radio quite often and warn you all about the dangers of drunk driving. There is absolutely zero reason to drive drunk, okay, especially in 2024 because there's way too many rideshare options out here. All right, not too many ta- uh, not too many taxi cabs, but they still exist. All right, if you can't find a ride wherever you at drunk, ask for somebody uh, who works at the establishment to assist you. They would be more than happy to if, if, you know, and if all that fails, then at least you should have a designated driver. Well, what if I told you that Lindsay said she had one drink at Rick's Sports Bar and she must be a lightweight or that must have been a very strong drink, some Bacardi 151 or a Long Island iced tea type concoction with vodka, rum, tequila, gin. Something had her leaning, okay, apparently, and it was just one drink. And it had her leaning so much that uh, she could drive, but she couldn't drive. So she decided to get a designated driver. Now, I never thought about who shouldn't be a designated driver outside of someone else who is also drunk. Like, you can't have a person who's also been drinking be the designated driver. Okay, even if you don't have a license, like it's suspended or something, I understand. Uh, If that person drives, they may be breaking the law, but I would still rather them drive with a suspended license than drive drunk. Well, Lindsay has broadened my perspective on this issue. There are other designated drivers you shouldn't have. I would never think that I would have to tell you about them, but let's go to WFIE News 14 for the report, please. A woman is facing child neglect charges. Police say she let a 12-year-old drive a car with herself and two other kids inside. Officers say Lindsay Pearson's brother-in-law told them she did it because she was intoxicated. Officers say when they interviewed Pearson, she told them she had one drink at a bar. She also told them she didn't know 12-year-olds could legally drive or could not, excuse me, legally drive on public roads. Police also charged Pearson with resisting law enforcement, saying she continued to scream as they tried to arrest her. Mm. Uh, You left the bar to go pick up the kids. And let one of them drive. (laughs) How many lies were told in this story? First of all, the lie that she had one drink. Okay, let's just say she had one drink. Cool. She was on something else. Okay, (laughs) if it's after one in the morning and you get the bright idea that you need to teach a 12-year-old to drive, you on something harder than one drink. Mm. I know on cocaine or something stronger when I hear it. Another lie. When Lindsay told police that she did not know that 12-year-olds could not drive vehicles on public roads. Really? Really, Lindsay? (laughs) Never in the history of American life have 12-year-olds been old enough to do anything fun. All right, you can't drink at 12 legally. You can't buy alcohol at 12 legally. You can't have sex at 12 legally. You can't buy anything with tobacco at 12 legally. You can't rent a car at 12 legally. And you certainly can't drive at 12 legally. So you're lying. And you know you're lying, okay? You lie, you lie, you lie. And you know what rhymes will lie? Hi. That's what you are. (laughs) I believe you when you said you only had one drink, but I also know alcohol and cocaine are popular among drug users. So I'm sensing some sort of combination. Now, I believe Lindsay should be investigated further because who the hell are these kids? 
Okay. <laughs> Where are their parents? All right. It's after 1 a.m. in the morning. You have a drink and you decide to just go pick up some kids to go joyriding. These news reports don't say they were her children, her family. It just says she went to go pick up three kids. Nobody wants to know how this 26-year-old uh, woman just knew random 12-year-olds. And why was it okay for random 12-year-olds to leave the house after one in the morning? Mm. And how come nobody is, any, is asking any questions about that? I'll tell you why. But I can't tell you why until we play a game of Guess What Race It Is! Lindsey Pearson, 26 years old, had one drink allegedly at a sports bar in Indiana, decided uh, after 1 a.m. to go pick up three kids and let a 12-year-old drive. Claimed she didn't know 12-year-olds couldn't drive vehicles on public roads. And she resisted arrest by kicking and screaming. DJ Envy, guess what race she is! White. <laughs> okay, okay. What makes you say that? Just... Everything that you said. Okay, okay. Indiana, okay. kicking. Okay, okay. okay. One okay. drink, drunk, okay. having a... Uh, 12 year old drive that we don't know where this 12 year old came from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody asking no questions. <laughs> Sounds okay. white to me. That's, okay, okay. Uh, Jess Hilarious, Lindsey Pearson, 26 years old, had one drink allegedly at a sports bar in Indiana. Decided uh, after 1 a.m. to go pick up three kids and let a 12 year old drive. Claimed she didn't know 12 year olds couldn't drive vehicles on public roads. Resisted arrest by kicking and screaming. Guess, Guess what race she is? Caucasian. Okay. I shake it up. I shake it up. What, 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 what makes you say that, Jess? Everything that you said, just like DJ Envy said, but the kicking and screaming like she wasn't wrong yeah, when the police yeah, yeah, like came yeah, out of yeah. nowhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, DJ Envy, Jess yes. Lyris, I'd like to tell both of you that you are correct. Yeah! She is yeah! Yeah! Would you like to see her picture? Yes, sure. absolutely. Oh, what the hell did I do with it? Hold on. Nope, that's Ryan Garcia. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what I did with the picture, oh. but yes, she Jesus. is white. She's white. Well, how does she look? Describe her. Um, don't say nothing don't, about don't, her back. Don't say nothing about her back. Just, how does she look? Slightly big backish. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. I can okay. only see her face. Okay. But I can tell by the, 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 the roundness. The roundness, roundness yeah. yeah. You know, there's no bone structure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just like food. Mm. It's like a Twitter egg. Remember yeah. how the Twitter eggs used to look? Yeah. 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 And she yeah. got yeah. the little Nikki stuff. That's what I'm like, saying. That's what I'm saying. So she's 26, so she's... Probably slightly big backish, mm-hmm. but her her trajectory says by 34, 35. Big, big, big. Big, big, big oh. backish. Okay. Yes, but she's she's Caucasian. She is cry at a Taylor Swift concert white. Okay, absolutely. Okay. She is mad that Beyonce doing country music white. Look okay. at her. <laughs> yes, okay. yes, okay. All right. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Damn. Well, thank you yeah. for that donkey today. So, so please give uh, Lindsey Pearson. Uh, let, let let Kathy Griffin give Lindsey Pearson the biggest hee-haw. Please give this giant jar of mail the biggest hee-haw. Mm-hmm. Uh, Charlamagne, I just want to inform you. States like uh, Alaska, Arkansas, Iowa, Kansas, North, and South Dakota, you can get your learner's permit at 14. That's still not... That's, I, I, know, I know it's not 12, 12, but I'm just telling you, at 14... It has can. nothing to do with this story. I know, I'm just letting you know, because I thought it was <laughs> kind of weird that, that a 14-year-old could even drive, but I just wanted to let you know that in Alaska... No, 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 you can get your permit at... 14? 16. What is it in yeah, Jersey? 16. 16. Oh, I don't know. In Baltimore, You get your 16. permit in 16 if you mm-hmm. take driver's ed. Mm. Nah, my daughter got a permit now. She's 15. Yeah. Giant jar of mayonnaise is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo. Kathy Griffin is crazy. <laughs> driver's license, you get a permit? Hey, in, in, Jer- in Jersey, because my daughter's 15 and she got it. She got a permit. Mm-hmm. A, mm-hmm. No, it says 16. You know, uh, so obviously age, you paid. My daughter's fifteen. No, obviously, she, you, she's in driver's ed. She got a permit now. Obviously, you paid for her to get it, and she ain't got it legally. <laughs> Pay for her to get. Okay, nothing. all right now. Okay, okay, all right. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilarious Charlemagne the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got some special guests with us. Yes, indeed. We got the brother Ryan Johnson and Chad. Ocho Cinco. Cinco. Welcome, brother. What's up with y'all? I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be I'm here. Glad to be here. Ocho, you're like a, a, a cultural icon in a way, man. You think so? Yeah, from from, from sports to Absolutely. Like, like, and it's been like this for a while. Yeah, and I've, I know I never really viewed myself like that. I kind of just enjoy having fun. Mm-hmm. Regardless of what atmosphere I'm put in, mm-hmm. I adapt to my surroundings and just act accordingly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's about it. I don't, I don't see it like that, though. I, I need you and Shannon. Y'all can't be looking at Jess like that, though. I don't huh? like y'all that, it, it wasn't that, him. That, that, it, was, it was both of them. It was Shannon. It wasn't him. He, he, yeah, yeah. That, that's my dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my yeah, yeah, dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. You know, I, I try. I directed it. In, <laughs> I didn't listen. I directed it in the right way. <laughs> okay, okay, you know, okay. Yeah. Because yes. I don't think Shannon understood or, or knew about my homie. Mm-hmm. You know? Got you. And so I kind of ain't really indulging it, but, you know, 
Yeah. We good. He, yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he didn't mean no disrespect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. It just yeah. felt, you know, it felt like, all right, all right, all right, cuz. Like, stop yeah, looking yeah, at my yeah, sister yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why, that's why yeah. you know, he said, I was like, I understand where you're coming from. Mm-hmm. And I just left it at that. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. When, and when you left it alone, it was left alone. Was like, so, yeah, there yeah. you go. You didn't so how, it. So how's it dealing with uh, Shannon Shaw with all the beef that he's getting in right now? It seems like he's arguing with everybody. It's coming from everywhere. And I told Unc. I say, Unc, this is what we got to do. We can't set a precedent every time somebody say something. Yeah. Y'all get together and apologize. We're going to have to make an example out of somebody. <laughs> <laughs> that was just told me yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, I'm telling you. Just one person. We got to make an example out of somebody. Because what's going to happen is people going to see, well, damn, if he can come at them and just say, I'm sorry, then they squash everything. I say, no, nah, that's not going to happen. Because now, they still, now you see it's starting to be a trickle effect. Mm-hmm. Now everybody got their little jokes. So I'm off papers now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on papers, man. I'm on, I'm, on, I'm on probation. Right, right, right. You know, you know I'd be in the streets. Mm-hmm. I'm like that. So my girl got insurance on me. So if anything happened to me, I told Unc, I got you. I'm going to be your enforcer. You know, Griselda had an enforcer. Escobar yeah. had an enforcer. For mm-hmm. Unc, I'm the enforcer. Mm-hmm. It's whatever. It's up but, and stuff. But you got to tell him, too, a lot of that does come with the territory. I know, I know, I know. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I think I think you understand that. Especially yeah. all these years, especially playing football, dealing with the media, dealing with the other side. Now, Unc, being on the other side with the media, I mean, we do it to the players. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. We yeah, do it to yeah, the players yeah, that's yeah. playing. So, I, I mean, all jokes, I think it, I, don't, I don't think it bothers them because we've been, we've been in it so long. I enjoy it. Yeah. I like the jokes. You look like you enjoy it. Yeah, I, I want you talking shit about me. <laughs> <laughs> I, lo- yeah. I love what y'all doing. Though. I love seeing all the athletes that are mm-hmm. controlling their own platforms from y'all to mm-hmm. Cam to the mm-hmm. to the pivot to all yeah. the smoke. I yeah. love it. We need that because you got to understand us as athletes. Remember the mainstream media controlled how we're perceived on the mm-hmm. outside. So ESPN and Fox and all those were able to get out to the masses and try to tell them who we really are. Now we've cut out the middleman and we are the voice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We are the voice now, and I, I think it's dope. Ryan, you are the CEO and founder of uh, Community... Community Media. Community Media. Yeah. Tell us about that. No, for sure. Um, and again, we're excited, excited to be out here, for sure. But um, Community Media, we're a media company based in Atlanta, Georgia, with the mission to basically amplify black creators, black gamers. Um, and that's actually how we got to link with Chad. Almost about a year ago, um, mm-hmm. we were brought into an opportunity to create an experience at the MLS um, All-Star Game last year that happened in Washington, D.C. Mm-hmm. But what a lot of people haven't realized is that all the professional sports leagues, the MLS, the NFL, and the NBA, they all now have professional gaming leagues mm-hmm. attached to their leagues as well. Mm-hmm. So we were part of the EMLS experience. We got to shoot some content with Chad, and that really started the conversation that ultimately led to him becoming like our first ambassador, not only for community media, but what we're building across the HBCU Esports League and the HBCU gaming ecosystem as well. Yeah. So literally for us, we throw live gaming events, live mm-hmm. concerts, working with major brand partners like Verizon, Discover, Nike, Hot Pockets, Mountain Dew, and you really utilizing these platforms to provide other means of scholarships for young black and brown students. Nice. Do you think the HBCU should change the curriculum? Because a lot of them are real old school and I'm sure they don't have a, a gaming content where these kids are making millions of dollars and yeah. even YouTube creators making millions of dollars, hundreds yeah. of millions. So the answer is yeah. So like, up until 2020, this didn't exist in the HBCU mm-hmm. ecosystem. Like, it was brand new. So the competition, the curriculum development, the internship opportunities, all that is now being put in place. Because I'll be real with you, like, our mm-hmm. goal is not to sell, like, hoop dreams to the black community that, yo, if you get into gaming, you will mm-hmm. make a million dollars. Because that's very few and far in between. Mm-hmm. But you can get a decent job. You can have a nice paying job doing something that you love to do. Right. But it's really about, first and foremost, educating everybody, right? So that's why this opportunity for us is so important. Because having that microphone to let people that look like us know that these opportunities exist is step one. Once that has become a thing, um, I guess taking a step back too, it's really, really important to understand that like 30, I think close to 30 out of 50 states in this country also now have varsity high school esports. Mm-hmm. So a few years ago, we actually partnered with the New York City Department of Education and we ran a tournament called the Battle of the Burrows in partnership with Microsoft, which was literally a Minecraft tournament to engage kids during COVID and like keep them engaged in their mm-hmm. high schools. Yeah. And like, so for us, it's like, yo, as this ecosystem's being built out at the high school level, it's being built out at the college level, what we noticed is that there was no black schools in general. There was no inner city schools and there were no HBCUs taking advantage of this. Mm-hmm. So it was like, what do we have to build? What do we have to create? Who do we have to tap into yeah. to like really build out this ecosystem? So for me, we look at gaming the same way we look at football and basketball. You have high school leagues, you have AAU programs, you have after school programs, you have professional leagues, you have job opportunities. And that's the same pipeline that we're building and establishing right now across gaming. Nice. Now, now, Chad, you had dinner with uh, Antonio Pierce, the Raiders coach? Yeah. Um, and, and, and you tweeted that you were going to ask for a coaching job? Yeah, actually, I was going to ask y'all for a job, too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, ask y'all, I know y'all have an opening. I know y'all, have, y'all can make some space. It's just got, it got filled. 
No, 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 no. We can add. We can add. Add another chair. The more the better. The merrier. But I was uh, I was in Vegas. <laughs> Super Bowl. I went and had. I was, it wasn't just me. Mm -hmm. Obviously, other people were there with, with Mr. Pierce and, and having and having dinner. And I just tweeted out the picture with him and I. Just playing. I'm playing around. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a jokester about. Listen, I finally got offered a job as a Raiders coach. And then Antonio went behind me and said, I can't wait to have you working with our receivers. <laughs> so wow. that's what that's what mm -hmm. sparked it. Like I was really going, oh. I can't coach. Really? I can't coach. Mm -hmm. Why not? I have, I have 37 other jobs. Yeah. I have 37 other jobs right now and I wouldn't have time. And coaching is really not my thing. But you got a passion for football though. I have a passion for the game of football, not coaching. I have a passion for playing. Got you, I, got if you, there's got somebody you. that want to bring me back, then I'll come and do that. At 46, you would play? I'm 56. Yeah, what I play yeah, on 56? She ain't no damn 56. Listen, stop, yeah, you know, you're a joke stuff, man. No. You're not older than... If you call... If you're 56 and calling Shannon Unk, something wrong. Yeah. No, I mean... You say Unk in general. I was born in 68. What you no, you ain't cut it off. Oh, my God. So y'all ain't... So I, that mean y'all ain't do your homework. I you did. We did my homework. You're born in 1977. <laughs> I was born in 1968 at Jackson Memorial Hospital in Miami. Oh, Damn, oh my God. Stop it, man. So would you would you play the league? Would I? Yeah. Today? You can't even hit nobody. Yeah, I'd be able to play. You can't, you can't hit nobody. Can't hit nobody. Hit nobody. <laughs> Look at the rules. Look at the rules. They damn near playing flag football. Mm. Come you think, back and you play. think that ruins the game? You know what? The NFL is all about protecting the players. But again, I see they're trying to add an 18th week. Is it really about protection? Or is it about the bottom line at the end of the day? Money. Maybe we know what it is. Come on now. The players are getting bigger, faster, and stronger, but the dimensions of the field have not have yet to change. Mm. So if everybody's bigger, faster, and stronger, there's only so much you could do in making the car safe. Mm -hmm. That at some point, if you're driving 100 miles an hour, you, you crash into a wall. Regardless of what you do, from a technical aspect, you're going to get hurt. The car is going to crumble. I mean, same thing when it comes to football players. Do so you think widening the field would make people safer? It would help. D. Lyman, 350 pounds, running 4.5. What? I seen that the other day. Yeah, crazy. What, what, in the so why do you drive a Prius? I drive a smart car. It's one, of the, safe, it's one, of, it's one of the safest vehicles out there. Very cost efficient. I get 55 miles to the gallon. <laughs> <laughs> I get 55 miles to the gallon and I can park anywhere. People always make fun of my damn car. But no, because you said it's small. That would it make is, it, it more prone to, if you get in an accident, it'd be something nah, bad. Nah, nah, it's one of the safest. It's been it's been battle tested. Okay. It's been battle That's why I drive it. And obviously, because I'm cheap as hell. I've been having, I had that since like 2004. Wow. All right, we got more with Ocho Cinco and Ryan Johnson. When we come back, don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, we are The Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with Ocho Cinco and Ryan Johnson. Charlamagne? You, was you serious about, I think Dion wanted you at Colorado at one point, or that was a rumor? Yeah, no, I, I asked him to come in there. Uh, right now, I work for I work for the Buffs as a recruiter. Seriously, so I'm just yeah, I'm just recruiting. Oh, for, okay, I'm, I'm recruiting for, for Prime. Okay, so you, they, he send you out just to talk to the players. Yeah, he don't have to see me. I do it myself. Actually, I can't tell when he bull. I wouldn't I wouldn't lie to you. Yeah. I lie for you before I lie to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So you do it, but it's, it's not official. It's official because if I'm doing it, I ain't doing it for free. <laughs> I don't do I don't do nothing. For but free. he doesn't have to tell you already. Know who who, who you should be looking at already. Bingo. Oh, you got, got you, got you, got you. Because we we over there in Colorado, we trying to beef up the interior, mm -hmm. offensively and defensively. So I know exactly what I'm doing. Got you. And and uh, you made a bet before the Super Bowl that if the Chiefs lost, you would give up eating McDonald's. We know you love McDonald's. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's all <laughs> I can't right. believe you ain't never got a deal with McDonald's. To be honest with you, I own three franchises, so I really you can't have right. a deal. That's uh, right. I forgot you. You better flex. Thank you. The, the, uh, <laughs> you said you would divorce your wife and give up sex for the rest of the year. Yeah. Were you really ready to give all that up? I mean, I knew the Chiefs were going to win, so that's why I made such an extreme. <laughs> I, I, knew, I knew the Chiefs were going to win, that's why I made, I made such an extreme bet. And yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she was pissed, but I, I needed her to understand. You know, you're married. Yeah. You know, sometimes I go out on a limb. I say some things that you're not going to agree with, but you know how I feel about you. Mm -hmm. We were good. You see who won the game, right? That's yeah. right. Absolutely. Yeah, I got the script. You got the script. Yeah, I got the script. <laughs> you I'm believe that when people say that the NFL nah, scripted? Yeah, yeah. You can't script can't that. Script man. that. You got yeah. Eleven dudes. That, no, hell no. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. Were you really thinking about going to the UFL? Nah, hell no. Nah. How much they pay? <laughs> How much they pay? <laughs> you said that. You tweeted out. You don't even know what you be tweeting. Nah, yeah, you don't. don't. I yes, be, you tweeted like, that you were considering the playing the for the moment. Memphis Showboats. I'd be in the moment I see something. Yeah. And then I instantly tweet it and I forget about it. But the fact that you mentioned the UFL, I want to know how much they pay. Yeah, I don't even know. Because I'm trying to diversify my portfolio. Yes. In my resume. Mm -hmm. and the fact that you won't hire me. I mean, I thought you were for <laughs> black people. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were for uplifting. I know, I'm trying to understand what's the problem. Well, speaking of uplifting, <laughs> you know, your yeah, Uncle Shannon, he be, do you feel like he puts himself in, in a lot of these positions himself? Like, for instance, like, him jumping out the car two days ago. What was ago. wrong with what that? Do you think of, no, what do you think about it? It was cool. He's promoting, okay. promoting his, his liquor brand. Okay. He promoting his cognac. Mm -hmm. He was doing a signing. He was explaining to people. He's on the road. <laughs> he has to to fly here, fly there, mm -hmm. new signings. Mm -hmm. And it's I, I like it. Of course, people making trying to make jokes of, and, and lighting yeah. every goddamn mm -hmm. thing he does. Everything. And, dude, my uncle. 
his hurt. He had two hip replacements. That's, that's what, what I said. That's, that's what I said. You understand that's what you I know, jumped to. Hall of Fame, Hall of Famer. He's he's been beat up. You know, yeah. technology wasn't as advanced as it is now. Yeah. So being able to recover from some of those injuries, mm-hmm. it's, it's tough. Mm-hmm. And he grown. He's tough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you're 55 years old and you got to run this circuit yeah. now. Like you got a whole new life in media. Yeah. Like you like okay always, now. Always on the go. Yeah. yeah. And so there's there's a micro- microscope on him. Obviously, mm-hmm. you bring some of that on you because you're volatile towards everybody else. Mm-hmm. So they're going to be volatile back. I think he yeah. understands that. Mm-hmm. And you have to welcome that. And he, he's okay with it. I welcome it too. I want. I need people to come at me because I like I got well, you jokes. gotta do something. Damn, tell me what so to do. Single. You gotta do something to put yourself to put yourself okay. out there. Okay, okay, okay. I don't. I still don't believe you're 56. He's not 56. Nah, he's 46. Yo, but one I thing I've always either. liked about him is how I do like how frugal you are. Oh, I'm cheap. Like I've learned a lot of ways <laughs> of just being frugal Bro. watching you over the years. That just started. Media. That just started. Oh, it did not. Ocho had some cars. He had Lambos. That he had big trucks. Years no, ago. no, 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 no. That was 20 years ago. That was 20 years. You have to understand the fruits of my labor. Those were not. Bought with football money. That was from obviously I, I own three what McDonald's, Ingo. So I'm not spending anything. I'm using or my hard earned money on the field. The stuff I did off the field, TV shows, mm. endorsements, mm-hmm. card signings, and then you got to think those cards you just named. I only had for three years and got rid of them because I didn't need any more. Mm. My name Ocho. It was it was a, it was a little bigger than anything I could purchase at the time. So it made no sense. Mm. Visually, visibly, you know who I was, no matter where I went. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what would the f- am I buying a goddamn Lambo for? That's right. Why yeah. am I driving a Ferrari? That's right. Mm-hmm. You Ocho. Mm-hmm. It didn't make any sense, even though ops- outside of the image, you know, when you're young, you know, you're trying to impress the women. and eh? The women mm-hmm. have already Googled what you're making, so it's no need. Bro, one day me and Pete Davis, Pete Davis wanted to go buy Cuban link chains. <laughs> and I, we, I told him, I said, we don't need to buy real ones because I saw you say that. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. we went and got... Three thousand dollar gold plated Cuban link. Ain't nobody asked no questions. Stay in his neck. Stay in his neck. Yeah, your neck was green as a mother. <laughs> Stay in his neck. No. Uh, but anyway, nah. nobody asked no questions. Yeah. 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 I mean, listen, man. It's it's for one, it's hard for mm-hmm. people to move the way I've moved. I've been doing this now past thirty years. Mm-hmm. It's hard because people we caught up in the image mm-hmm. and and looking a certain way becomes your identity. Mm-hmm. Driving a certain certain car becomes mm-hmm. part of your identity. Mm-hmm. You know, and you, people focus on image and looking a certain way because I want to look. Like, I got it. Mm-hmm. I just was the complete opposite and really didn't care what anybody thought. Mm-hmm. You know, I wanted to ask you too, man. You remember when uh, French Montana made Ocho Cinco? Ocho yeah. Cinco. Mm-hmm. How many? Like, I, you, know, you know what? I have a problem. I need to holler at French for um, my royalties. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I, right. I ain't getting no, no royalties. He ain't even hit you up and ask you, can he do that? I have, it's not not. I don't think you get royalties for saying your name, right? No, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't how know. many women offered you Ocho Cinco yeah. because of that song? Mm. What's that on my left hand? I'm just back in the day. That's yeah, yeah, so I long I, ago. Yeah, I don't yeah, don't indulge. You, you, yeah, I don't like. That. I ain't trying to start no argument. Yeah. I'm I'm I don't have to deal I'm with you. that when I get home. That's right. You not. You yeah, I'm saying. <laughs> but see, I try to set you another man. Like, like he not all married All I said, too. by the way, all I said was offer. I ain't say what you yeah, did. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't move because offering. There's always something on the back. There's a catch. Yeah, you got to yeah, think yeah. anything on the outside is always an added expense. Yeah, because ain't nothing free. Yeah, even if they offering, you got to give something to give. I ain't doing that. How'd you feel about the record? Ain't ain't bother me. Yeah, ain't bother me. Mm-hmm. You know, we all make mistakes in life. We all do. I pick myself up, dust myself off, put my head forward, and kept moving. Mm-hmm. Took responsibility. You got to keep moving. Yeah, that's it. Ain't look back. I've been fighting. I've been fighting that mountain I fell from ever since. Fighting to climb back. We here now. I tell you what, you don't f- up on parenting, yo. I love the way you yo, are with your daughter. B. Yo, I love this. Yeah. you got one or two. I got. I have one on the way, and then yeah. I have uh, an eleven-year-old boy. Like y'all, man, yeah. I love it. I love it. I'm yeah. on. I'm on. I mean, have eleven. You have eleven children. Yeah. Damn, man, 11. stop listening you to them. Eleven kids, yeah. man. Because you stop listening to this <laughs> man. <already. laughs> you got eleven kids, man. <laughs> Yo, this man is an entertainer. So he was Nick man. Cannon before Nick Cannon. Okay? Nah, I was. I was Nick Cannon before Nick Cannon. I was Future before Future. I know that's right. You know, I, I, I've been doing this for a very long time. I'm not sure why I would love when they talk about fathers. I would wish they you would lump me in, in that. There. Yeah, I should. Absolutely. I should be in that because I also have a lot of kids, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I'm I'm hands on. I'm thankful for those I have kids from. Mm-hmm. And and uh, they're really what makes this, this train roll, mm-hmm. you know, go. Yeah. Because most of the time, people that have one, mm-hmm. just one, mm-hmm. they going through hell. And it's hard to find success when you don't have kids with the right people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's hard because they can make your life a living hell. Yeah. Living hell. And um, I do have 11, serious, all together. Yeah. I believe you got 11. Saying. Nobody going to lie about that. I'm more. Well, I'm going to lie about that. So, would you had three over the last year? Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm working. I'm, I'm working. <laughs> no eleven kids, man. No, I remember, I, I, it, says, no it says kids. he had eight. I ain't seen no eleven, but well, I'm, I'm married, so then I have to. Those are also my kids as okay. well that are coming. Yeah. So eleven, and I'm working on twelve right now. Oh, oh no, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Keep on multiplying. But again, you want me to babysit? Yes, you actually can. One, listen, you actually one, can. That's why y'all need to hire me. Listen, look at the position <laughs> I can do here at Breakfast Club. Mm -hmm. Boom, you deliver. I'm here. I start as an intern as your babysitter. Okay. So you bring the baby to work. Boom, I'm here. Set. Okay. You ain't got to worry That's about smart. nothing. I change pampers, milk, burp, feed, mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. So I can start like that and then work my way up as the baby gets older. Okay. Then you give me a position at a chair. Like I want, I want them in these chairs. These chairs is nice. Mm -hmm. okay. So I work my way up the ladder. <laughs> but I just, I'm trying to diversify my portfolio. Okay. Mm -hmm. And would like to work here. All right. Well, don't move. We got more with Ryan Johnson and Ocho Cinco. When we come back, it's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with Ryan Johnson and Ocho Cinco. Jess. How much diversity in the portfolio do you need? You need 37 jobs. You're 56. You say you got 11 kids. He's not 56, How man. I'm he believing got no 11 him. Kids. I'm, I'm choosing to believe him at this point. How can you still be so active in your kids' life? It's if easy. You got well, 37 we got, jobs. You got my kids, everybody in college except two. My daughter runs track at University of Kentucky. My son is at Arizona State. Mm -hmm. I have an older daughter who's 26. Ja'Kyra, hey, baby, I know you're going to see this. My daughter's at Prairie View a &M, mm -hmm. You know, little ones. Mm -hmm. And then have French fry. French okay. fries, my little two year old. Okay. Baby Kennedy, Cha Cha, her sister. And I, I need more. Okay. I need and you want more? more. Yeah. You want more kids? I, more. I have time. Okay. I have time. Yeah. I have time because I'm retired. Yeah. yeah. So I'm trying to diversify so my portfolio. That's why you're trying to get more yeah, jobs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't, I didn't, I was so busy when I was playing. I never got the full experience of what it's like to be a father. Got it. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah. I was always wow. gone. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. You, you know what? They, they canceled me one time, and I, I remember this. When your wife had her show. Uh -huh. And I was oh, like, "Oh yeah, they came. It was at your head, boy. right? It was at my head." Yeah. And I and I said, "I was like, I feel like the network is not showing the sisters selling houses enough." Mm. And then they got mad at me and said, "I was coming from." And I was like, "No, I want to see more of it on TV." Right, right, right. They're just showing the beef and the drama, and mm. I hate that they show that with black women. Mm. But when they have the white women show, they show all the houses oh, they sold. That's that straight old Joe. Oh, I know the wife said that's straight. And I was mad. I was mad. I was like, "They should show the sisters more." Straight old Joe. Well, it's hard for me to set them straight. I would need her here. I would need gotcha, her here gotcha, to, gotcha. to be able to explain her mm -hmm. side of the story. But I understand, I understand what you mean. Obviously, they, they were selling houses. But one thing, if they were just selling houses, right? How many ads is that going to appease to? I get it. Mm. I to, get even it. even today, just in, in, in general, you got to have some type of... Drama. Some type of something. Yeah. yeah. To Drama attract bring the views. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, just, just in general. And in, in all that we do. So, like, even the beta this... We need some type of drama. Somebody just say something. I so wonder I, about that though. He said somebody say something. Let me just say something. Because up until recently, I don't think y'all had a lot of drama on Nightcap. Oh no, no, and no, it's no, not we, even we, really we drama. Y'all just addressing. Fact, we no, we haven't That's had any drama. That's because he was on probation. Yeah, I was. I was on papers. Okay, yeah. so I just got off the page now. Yeah, we we didn't. I mean, I think Shannon and I we play off each other, and the chemistry is so goddamn good. We mm -hmm. don't even have to do that. Yeah, mm -hmm. people just like hearing y'all yeah, talk. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And then it's to see us in a different space mm -hmm. that you never get to see us in and talk the way we are because it's like the barbershop locker room in a way you've never seen us before mm -hmm. and I think that's what is more appealing to the audience as opposed to it being any drama mm -hmm. I think the best thing uh, with all of these platforms is just showing that athletes are not dumb because there was always mm -hmm. this, that, mm -hmm. that stereotype the type, of the dumb, yeah, dumb, job. dumb job especially yeah. in football mm -hmm. I think y'all beyond shattered yeah, that yeah most definitely most definitely mm -hmm. Ryan what's up <laughs> End us with some words, man. No, I would say kind of just everything, man. Like, first being here, like, everything we're doing across gaming, music, entertainment, like, talking about upcoming projects, like, the next mm -hmm. big thing coming up for us, we'll be backstage doing, like, all the gaming and artist interviews at Rolling Loud, nice. California. So, like, we're just trying to continue to find ways to bridge the gap, mm -hmm. make sure that our people have a seat at the table, make sure that they have the information to make their own informed decisions mm -hmm. about what they can do with their own individual life. One thing we always say, like, stick to the plan, because, like, Again, you know, with this yesterday, we go here, we learn about the relationship that y'all got with the Saturday folks mm -hmm. and the whole nine. So we're like, yo, everything kind of works and builds on each other. It builds on itself. Mm -hmm. But like the main message we wanted to share is like, again, if parents, aunts, uncles, you have nieces, nephews, kids that are mm -hmm. trying to tap into gaming, you're telling them to get off the game. We just mm -hmm. 
strongly advise to change the message. Yeah, there's a space yeah. for because it. there's actually a real space for Huge it right space. now. I mean, within our league alone, the last two years, HBCU students have earned over two million dollars playing in our league. Mm -hmm. So for us, we have kids that are earning six figures just by being a part of this. And sometimes these are traditional athletes. Like we have one kid at Florida Memorial uh, right now in Miami. Mm -hmm. He literally plays on the basketball team and he's on their esports and gaming team. Mm -hmm. So he's on a scholarship for basketball and he's earning money in this pathway. Okay. So was interesting in like the HBCU community, the gamers are getting more NIL than the traditional sports athletes. So what that, games should we be having our kids on then? Bro, so the games that are mainly in this NBA 2K, Madden, Call of Duty, Fortnite, Rocket League, Mortal Kombat, mm -hmm. um, Mario, like Super Smash, all the games that you know as what right. the one was playing coming up. What about Minecraft? Mm -hmm. Minecraft is a big one too. That's what I was really? mentioning. Like we just did an entire New York City Battle of the Burrows we had 125 high schools across all five boroughs going head to head mm. in Minecraft, mm. and the kids were the winner was tasked with whoever built the best New York monument inside of Minecraft. Mm. So it was a whole linkage between the gaming competition, STEM based education, and like that's really, really it is like what we're right. doing because like black parents don't realize it. Like yo, your kids are on the game, but they could be the ones making the game. Yeah, like a big thing right now in Fortnite is this thing called um, UEFN, right? Mm -hmm. So Unreal Engine Fortnite, essentially. It's allow it's the same model they brought into gaming that exists right now in the music. Mm -hmm. So as a young black person, you can go in and build a custom level in Fortnite. You will get paid on the hourly play time that people are playing on your level. Mm -hmm. And they will share 40% of the revenue with all of their creators. So mm -hmm. like, yo, I guarantee you someone in this room got someone that's playing Fortnite. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. my son, yeah. Absolutely mine Okay, too. well your son and his little friends, they could be making LLCs. They could his be little friends. Yeah, they could be <laughs> like, they could literally be mm -hmm. doing what they're already doing every day right now and converting mm -hmm. that into revenue. Game companies are then hiring these young people to then come build out experiences on their behalf. Mm -hmm. But again, like when we look at this, the biggest divide of what we've seen is those who grow up with computers versus those who grow up with consoles. Mm -hmm. So when you look at just demographics, black and Latinx families generally play on Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo. When you look at the other side of the coin, it's computer-based games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The reason we've been excluded from this space, the big event that you're talking about, mm -hmm. those are PCs. Yeah. And so how are you supposed to get in how are high school kids supposed to get in when the schools themselves can't afford the computer lab to start a gaming team mm -hmm. right. so a lot of the work that we're doing is working with a Verizon to then literally get the money to build the lab to give the scholarship so the kids can then play in the league or not even that Wi-Fi mm -hmm. like Wi-Fi is so damn important in, in a lot yeah. of these areas they don't have strong Wi-Fi right. they be lagging the kids yeah, be right. complaining yeah, so. you know what's crazy is like in our first major initiative was um, back in May 2020 and we literally did a streamathon on Twitch uh, we had people like Offset, we had Jeezy, um, Michael Strahan was a big part of that. Mm. We raised $118,000 in 20 hours on Twitch. We took that money and bought devices, mobile hotspots, and laptops for kids in Atlanta mm -hmm. that were basically could not graduate high school because they didn't have a device mm. because of distance learning. That's crazy. So I was like, that's so when we look at like this whole thing of gaming and technology, like it's really, really not about the kids just playing the game. Yeah. But what we realized over the years, like, yo, we really gotta tap into larger voices that are known within media and known within sports that also have a very strong passion to like bring this to their community. And so now we're going about it like a whole different approach. Yeah. Um, so now like for us that's kind of like what's coming up that's how we're building this out and we just say like for parents if your kids are interested in something they're doing it every day we now live in a passion economy you can turn your passions into money that's right. what if your kid sucks not it's saying mine do but it's not even about it's not even suck. about it's not even about the, the okay. being good or bad okay. right it's about because again like I play games every day. I'm not a great gamer, but we run a media-based business that's focused right. on gaming, right. right? So again, I turned a passion into a profession. Mm -hmm. And what we're saying is like, yo, how I stay in touch with my family, I'm, I'm from Columbia, South Carolina. Like, 803! Nice. Yeah, I'm from Columbia. So like, the way I stay in touch with all my cousins is through Call of Duty. Right. Mm -hmm. So like, it's a means of communication for mm -hmm. us, but I'm not trying to be a professional Call of Duty gamer. Right. But no, what I can do is use the information that I have, bring that to a bunch of companies that are trying to touch young people, trying to connect with diverse audiences, trying to build with HBCUs. I'm like, yo, let's just do this through a whole new league. That's dope. You really diversified your portfolio, which your single did. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Ryan Johnson, Chad Ocho single. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, just hilarious. Charlemagne the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. It's time for a positive note. What we got? And the positive note is simply this: uh, nothing that's for you will require you to act out of character to get it. Always remember that. Absolutely nothing. Have a great day. Breakfast club, bitches! Y'all finished or y'all done?